M Mercer knew because black women weren't considered ladies in the same way, only now did occur to hear that Tyree might disapprove. What do you think I should do? Mercer had been back with Quicks only a day, and already she felt as if her feelings for Tyree had grown while she'd been gone. He'd asked her to love him, and now she did. Tyree examined her face. He picked up one hand and held it for a moment. I don't know. When you're away, I'll have to find some excuse to see you. She sucked her teeth. Just see you? That's all? And talk? Give you advice haven't you asked for before? I'm asking for advice now about this speaking tour. Yes, my advice is let it wait a few days. You can think it over. We can think it over. And if we both decide not to do it or to do it, you lost nothing. And if you decide to do it, well, no doubt. By having waited, she'll be willing to pay more. More? My God. Yes, more. They got money. All right. Tyree stepped back from Mercer. They were alone together in the parlor. He signaled that the conversation was over, but Mercer wasn't finished. Ty? He inclined his head curiously, warily. She never called him anything but Mr. Tyree. My mother used to have cleaned the old prior's latrine. It was an indoor latrine. Mother said they, ba they bragged about how they had it shipped from someplace and how expensive it was. On Sundays when they were off to church, she was supposed to clean up everything before they came back. So she'd clean up and then she'd use it. It was blue and white china like dinner plates. I'll never forget it. Mercer paused and thought. Tyree watched her eyes move from side to side. Her forehead worked with concentration. You know, and I know, I can't stand up in front and some people with lace caps and tell, you, tell them that story. My mother is dead at the picture I have of her. The one that comes in mind when I call her name is I can see her sitting on that lettering laughing. That was all I had left of my mother. And I can't even see my daddy. I can't bring his face to my mind. You know when you know a word where you can't quite think to say it, that's how face that's how his face is to me. Am I gonna tell him that? I said that to somebody in New York. She said to me, My dear father died when I was three. What do they care? And I left my baby Ty. I left my baby in Virginia. Oh, God help me. She groaned and she began to tremble. I can't tell them that. I can't tell them that. I can't, Ty. I can't bear it. I had to tell it in court. I can't bear to say it again. The groaning turned to sobs. Harriet came running in from the dining room. She checked Tyree's ears. He inclined his head and Harriet held her. At his touch, Mercer began to roll her head from side to side. The sobs nearly choked her. Della appeared from the kitchen, then the children and Blanche and Abby Ann. Each one touched the arm space on her back. Tyree stood at the edge of their circle, tight, noisy, cooing, shushing. When Mercer quieted, Tyree told him to sit down. They sat, no speaking to her. He said it to Harriet, then turned to Mercer. Merce? She looked up at him in a handkerchief. I'll talk to some of the Randolph the railroad people about your little boy. Let's see what we could do. The next afternoon, Harriet came to tell Mercer that she heard from the anti-slavery lady who was going to England. I thought we had better luck, frankly. She didn't want to take that. Well, it's just as well. I never did like the idea of Etta on the big old ocean. Mercer sighed. She didn't want to scatter her family in more than was necessary. Harriet humped with un uncharacteristic irritation. It's all right, Mercer said. No, it's not. Why not? Because Eugenia had the nerve to say she expected the British to pay too much attention to her and she get petted and spoiled. God forbid a colored child who would get attention for all her work for us, to, you know the problem. A young Negro girl just couldn't have the character to withstand a little petting. Eugenia? Eugenia Pitts? Yes, she wrote me saying that she wanted to do something for children. She wrote you? Yes, I wouldn't want to be holding to her. I'm beholden to you and your family. I don't mind being in your debt, but not her. I wish you would have told me. Well, I'm sorry. Etta's learning here so beautiful, like I told Mr. Ty. I tell you, if anybody goes to work, it ought to be me. Don't you go out until they settle until the case. I wish you told me, Mrs. Pitts. 
As if make up for the Pitts affair, Harriet asked Mercer to move into her rooms in Mrs. Becker's house. Mercer accepted grateful to be out of Little B's house shed. During the day, Mercer worked with Della at Quicks. Within a couple days, she was also drafted to help with Abby Ann's wedding dress. In order to pay them something for her room and board of children, Mercer took all of the work that she could manage. Sometimes, during the relentless days, she smiled ironically to herself about current schedule. In Virginia, people complained that they would like mules. The quicks worked more like insects. They understood work and respected it. In slavery, she'd work because everywhere and in every facet of her life, force pressed is on her. She hadn't given work just like she hadn't given birth. The pressure squeezed and squeezed and work came out and there was not a thing she could do to stop it. Here comes Pop. She worked for being a big man. She worked for the boss lady, but she worked because it was in her and to keep it in would have killed her. If she was making gravy, how could she not? At least now and then, one on a good day when the sun was fine and the air was cold and clear, how could she not watch the flour fry in a grease until it was brown? Just a little browner, just right, just deep brown and rich one moment, half a moment before it burned and pour in a cold, cold water that jumped around in the pan and steamed and misted and greased her face and neck. How could she not stare with all her might to get it smooth, smooth, salty, and rich? How could any man or woman resist doing something, some one thing, well, with joy? They took away the joy and sold it like they sold everything, but she'd given work as she'd given birth. In the Quicks household, she gave work willingly. They worked alongside her and they knew it's worth. They knew it in aching backs, tired eyes, and stiffened fingers. They accepted work like friendship and coin. At night, Harriet directed Mercer's reading. She gave her list of words to memorize, irregular verbs to conjugate, and complex sentences to dissect. Abby Ann complained that Mercer would never finish the fancy work for her wedding. So Tyree volunteered to read her in the quicks parlor at night while Mercer served, sewed under a lamp. Manny demanded to be brought down most evenings too. They read the Bible, but also at Harriet's urging the black autobiographies of the day. Blanche sat on the ottoman by Tyree's chair. By evening, her eyes were too weak to sew anymore. So she sat quietly with her eyes closed and head back. Sometimes she knit with her eyes closed. After 15 or 20 minutes, she would put the knitting aside, rest her head in his lap, and fall into a cough rack sleep. Abby Ann came down with Blanche and sat in the shield back chair next to Mercer. They shared the lamp and the relative quiet of the far corner. There, Abby chatted at Mercer while they worked on the wedding dress. Today, oh, what a fuss on Walnut Street. The people coming towards as started as awful a commotion. She paused. They did? Oh, an awful commotion. And why do you suppose? Mercer looked at the felt cap and sat hauntly on the top of her head. Abby Ann had told Mercer to stop wearing her bonnets perched on the back of her head like county folks. She knew the people on Walnut Street had made a commotion even if she couldn't have guessed she heard enough of blanche's stories to know where most of them aimed they thought you was they thought she said refusing to let mercer take her line that ephraim was walking with two white women and in my heavens i feared that they would come after us they would have 10 or 20 years ago Della said then they would get up close on you and saw the bad blood come through ha 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 Mandy laughed at Abby Ann, then said to Della, did you get the book? Here, Della handed a book to Tyree. I sent the girls to the London library for it. You know how your daddy likes those stories. Not another one of those women. That's good stories, Manny said. My father's favorite stories, Tyree said, Mercer, are about white women who get caught by the Indians. Real white women, he said pointedly at Abby Ann. I'm tired. Nothing personal, but I'm tired of hearing about slavery, slavery, slavery. Is this one where she won't come back, Tyree asked Red. 
So I reread the title, The Narrative of Mrs. Mary Jeminson, who was taken by the Indians in the year 1755 when only about 20 years of age and has continued to reside amongst them to the present. I love those stories, Tyree said to Mercer. We were the only children at school who dreamt about being captured by the Indians because mother and daddy only read to ones where people chose to stay with their adopted families rather than come back to civilization. Can you imagine? Great grandmother was a wild Indian. Used to take grandpa Gabrielle and his sisters and brothers into the woods for weeks. He said that's where, that's why he couldn't stand to be copped, cooped up in the house to look for sea. That was Mary Gabrielle's mother. Seems to me a ship would co coop him up worse. What happened to his sisters and brothers, Mercer asked. Consumption, each and every one but him. Etta came from bees to pra from practicing piano. Africana came down as she was required to do, to sit and practice for her, although she wore her reluctance like a heavy burden. Etta played so quietly that Tyree's reading, reading could be heard over the music. She repeated troublesome musical phrases relentlessly, each once again and again until she has mastered it. Africana fidgeted. You hear how she does that over and over, Della said to Africana? Uh-huh. What you say? Yes, ma'am. That's what you have to do to be good. See, you want to play, but you aren't willing to do the work. Tyree stopped reading and looked from his mother to the girl's piano. When I was a boy, he said, they try to make me do that on the piano after three hours, three or four times, I would throw myself on the floor and scream and kick like a little devil. And I came in here, Della said, and I would beat him with anything I could get a hold of. Didn't do much good. Finally, my father said music was for girls, so Harriet had to continue, and I never did learn to play. Harriet did pitch like a fit, Pitch a fit like you did, Della said. But I'll tell you, this sh she never sat down and went like a child there either. Etta's practicing continued ditties and chords and simple folk tunes from Europe, running under Tyree's voice and through it as he read. Mercer stopped every now and then to admire her. She wondered whether or not black churches ever employed women to play their music, and if so, how much did they pay? Winter kept them in, snow had fallen, the air was damp, and the inside of the house and schoolrooms were stale from the fumes of coal dust and lamp oil. Cyrus and Maddie caught colds. Abby Ann came down with the croup. Della mumbled that it was Abby Ann's ambitious to lie on her back and let someone take care of her. The others agreed. When Ephraim came to visit, he greeted the patient by saying, How did you find yourself due this winter? Miss Chloe, delighted with ministry, Abby Ann responded in kind, pretty well, I thank you. Mr. Caesar only I aspired to. Mercer learned from Harriet that they were quoting from a series of etchings and lithographs by Edward Clay and that become popular not just in the United States, but also in England in the 1820s. The prince characterized successful black people like quicks in their ilk as if such a professional class of Africans were hilarious in, in itself. Now, 30 years later, in which blackface minstrel shows have become so popular in America that Irish performers took to using the African using the Africans banjo for their own folks music framed copies of Clay's be hung on the walls of Manny and Della's customer. I hear that S H I T in here again. They're both getting out. Manny shouted from his room. They giggled softly and lowered their voices. Bet she stay inside. Anywho, Ephraim whispered, Colored people could hardly go out without being salted. Ephraim also did not endear himself by leaving freshly Delhi, ordered.